Welcome to Dede Watara, Party Line Talk Show on K1037. Arlene Gawanahawi Jacobs, Yojuts, I'm your host. Uwa Wanizarade, MCK Friday. My guest is Grand Chief Joseph Tequira Norton. Gwaye, Joe. How's it going, Joe? Ah, not too bad. We're um, just getting back into the swing, and swing of things after the holidays. I've had uh, some physical problems with my foot and have to take care of that but uh, other than that uh, it's uh, the momentum is starting to build up you know information coming in you know meetings that are being uh, proposed and uh, in um, in Ottawa some in Quebec City here in Montreal a variety of different things that are uh, that are going to take place we'll have our first uh, council meeting on Monday mm-hmm. uh, for the new year and there's not too much on the agenda, but uh, I'm sure, you know, as we go along, we'll build up the agenda and get uh, get a number of issues there that need to be addressed almost immediately that were left over from uh, from last year. <clears throat> it's unusual to put it that way, but it was last year. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so there's really been a lull during December? December and... Uh, <clears throat> well, actually, no, De- December was quite busy, right up until the... Um, you know the the uh, final week of um, uh, before Christmas. It has it was quite busy, mm-hmm. uh, but now uh, there was a temporary lull, as you said, but it was only a short time period, and now we're into uh, into uh, I guess uh, regaining our our momentum, and people are back from holidays and vacations and all of that, and. We're ready to get going. So mm-hmm. there's many issues that we have to readdress. Uh, some that are, some that have been there for quite a while. Others that are new that are coming up, and it's both on the positive side as well as the negative side. I wanted to ask you about uh, last week editorial in the Eastern Door. There was the um, the the editor of the Eastern Door was his comment about uh, the seniorie. And why don't we just go there and take a bulldozer and build something? So how would you answer that? I'm all for that, but we know <laughs> on the practical side what the, um, I guess, what the uh, reaction would be. But there are issues and, uh, and strategies that we need to develop in order to, um, to be able to, I guess, begin to put pressure on, uh, on all uh, parties of interest. I'll put it that way because you're talking about locally around us, the surrounding municipalities, you know, and the people that live in that region, in that area. There's a wide uh, swat between Chattagee and St. Catherine, right? It's all wide open mm-hmm. all the way to the American border. So that that particular area has not been touched, I think, for this for the very reason that they that everybody knows. It's controversial. Everybody knows that it's part of our the grievance that we've had against the against Canada, against Quebec, the municipalities about the utilization of that particular area. One of the things is, and I and I'm all for um, uh, you know generating uh, momentum, doing something, but we have to plan out what are we going to do. Even right now, we got uh, 500 acres returned or 700. But 500 identified. Even now, we have to start planning. What are we going to do with that land? You know, is it going to be sort of uh, for for housing development? Is it going to be for um, for commercial development? Is it going to be for farming? And I think the same plans, the same idea, the same concept, has to be given towards the additional uh, the scenery itself, which is. Another four, 24,000 acres, I believe, is what it is. So it's one thing to say, yeah, we want to do something on there, but, you know, what is it going to look like? There's infrastructure issues, water and sewer. I'm not saying that's, uh, not using that as an excuse, no. but it's a reality. Of course it is. But it, that's always been talked about. Well, how come we just don't go there and do something? Mm-hmm. So, you know, we have to we have to work with the outside, the external governments, and that's not going to help if we do something like that. It could be a way of, um, 
let's I'll use the term encouraging them to, <laughs> to sit down and, and talk to us to finalize this, you know. I, actually, to scare them. Yeah, in, in a way, you know, to motivate them, encourage them. Mm -hmm. I'll use those terms rather mm -hmm. than that scared them, but you can come. You can put any kind of label you want on it, and it it is uh, it is something that we need to uh, we need to think about more thoroughly than we have in the past. Because, I mean, sitting in Ottawa or wherever it may be and talking to officials about this situation, about the scenery, is um, you know is is one thing, but actually on the ground right here in our own back our own backyard is another thing. The the um, the manner in which Canada wants to settle any kind of uh, uh, land issues across the country is they have a plan in place for that. There's comprehensive uh, uh, you know discussions, negotiations, and there's specific specific claims, comprehensive claims. We're not talking about a claim here. Everybody agrees that's our land. Mm -hmm. How are we going to settle it? What is it going to look like? Then on top of that, they want to go through. Well, within your community, you have to, you have to hold a referendum. If you come up with a plan, then you have to have a referendum, and uh, make sure that uh, it's supported by the community. But included in that is the fact that you've got a whole bunch of other people now that have been designated as Mohawks. You know, people who've never lived here, never been involved in anything, and they're all supposedly entitled. Uh, to have a vote, and they're all entitled to benefit from that. So, do you think that's part of their plan? I believe it is. I, I believe it's it's part of a a plan that was uh, that's been in the, in the works, not just for us, mm -hmm. but right across the country. And I don't want to get too far into that at this point, but it is something that we have to be well aware of. It's sitting there, so it prevents us, in a sense, uh, it 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 would. It would prevent us, in a sense, over here, because of the position we've taken on uh, on our registration system, on our on our identification of our people, and who can live in our territory. In in essence, it would almost prevent us from doing that, because from exercising that, because Canada has another plan. And if we go the route that they have laid out, in terms of how to um, how to uh, settle. Uh, a, a, a land situation, then we're in for a, we're in for major problems. On the other hand, though, we have to come up with our own plan about how to counter that, and that's where the involvement of community members and looking at this the situation from a clear thinking point of view. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's there's a lot of anger that could be involved in this. There's a lot of emotion. Sometimes we have to put that on the side and come at it thinking clearly about okay, this is. Uh, this is how we should develop and do this thing, you know. Um, there's there's a number of ideas that are out there right now that have been uh, that have been looked at, and you know there's ways there's ways that we can uh, <laughs> we can force we can force the issue, mm -hmm. you know. And one of them is uh, basically, I guess, like you said, on the ground action. You know, now I'm not saying tomorrow somebody go out there and with a bulldozer as as was. Uh, uh, suggested in the mm -hmm. in the eastern door, but it's it's one way. It's another way. So. But it's uh, it's certainly easy to give your opinion when you really don't know what's going on politically. Yeah, but uh, we've given or tried to have give, given as much information as we can in terms of, and then you know you look at it, and it's not only the eastern door. It's individuals who are very frustrated and say, you know, Joe, let's just get in there and. You know, the hell, the heck with the, what they think. Let's uh, let's plant huge gardens. Let's do just to show that we're you know we're we're gonna we're gonna occupy. We're gonna use it. And yeah, that might might be something that we have to think about in the future. But it's also in line with as you mentioned earlier. There's people out there that we have to talk with. You know, mm -hmm. a large swath of that land really is. Um, I won't say it's going to be difficult, but it's going to be make it much easier if you have one sort of Owner, and the, that owner is the um, uh, MTQ, Department of Transport, Quebec. They own a big chunk of that anyway, mm -hmm. or it's it's under their um, it's under their uh, administration or responsibility. So that's one one way of being able to uh, recover that 
that land and to be able to utilize it again. But we have to have a plan. We should be getting together and talking about what are we going to do overall. Actually, what's going to happen to all the people that live on that land right now? That's that's a, going to be a big problem, not only for us, but for the province and the federal government also. Well, that's, uh, <clears throat> that's something that uh, we have to give serious thought to. I mean, in, uh, in, in, um, in, let's call it a survey or that was done several years ago uh, in Ganawage, uh majority of people said, take everything back. Take everything back, right. Take everything back, including even the places that are occupied at this point in time. Well, I guess that's, that's a directive that we have to seriously consider. Mm-hmm. Um, and how is that going to work in terms of people who are living on the land itself at this point, who have homes, who've developed it? In one way or another, even though it's on, uh, it's on disputed land. I'll call it disputed land because but they don't know that's that. what it is. No, uh, I mean, years ago, and I'm talking way, way back in time, mm-hmm. there were people that lived in this region over here when it wasn't as populated as now. They knew that and they understood that. Mm-hmm. But in recent, uh, and I'll say the last 50 years or so, that's changed. You've got more people who've come here from all over the place, all over the world, really, practically. And Okay, Joe, on that thought, we're going to go to break. We'll be right back. Okay, Joe, so we were talking about the scenery and the different issues regarding the scenery and the land process. Yeah, before, before we broke, I was just getting into that scenario about, you know, going back, way back in time and um, in the surrounding areas, people understood that uh, they were living in Mohawk territory, even though, you know, uh, and, and families had been there for, for, uh, for, uh, for quite a long time that understood from a historical point of view that that was Ganawaga territory uh, or scenery territory, if you, whatever label you want to put on it. They, uh, but in recent times, and I'll say maybe in the last 50 years, that's changed because You've got a lot of people, you've got a lot of immigrants coming from all over the world that now live in this region over here, surrounding us. And that, that old uh, understanding is no longer there. So we now live in a time period, in, in, uh, and I, I include the politicians too, mm-hmm. provincial politicians, municipal politicians. Um, they've lost all um, historical understanding of the situation in which they live. So, I mean, they're, they're just continuing to develop and build homes, do all these things. And um, when, when we address this issue with them, it's almost as if it doesn't exist. And they're like amazed that, you know. Like living, they never heard about yeah. it. You know, we, we, have, we made a presentation uh, last year, I think it was, at the National Assembly here in Quebec. And uh, the members of parliament, the members of the National Assembly, are all sitting there, and it's almost like, well, we never heard this before. We don't, we don't know uh, that that existed. Of course, you, of course, it does. He said, you know, we almost, uh, we almost fought a war over that in 1990. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's, it's, uh, it's still the same situation now. Um, I'm concerned that it's going to get worse because you get more people coming in now that know nothing about the history of this region. Uh, they and and they don't care. Or you know they'll they'll fight against you, do anything that they can to prevent uh, prevent us being able to exercise what we believe is our right in this in this region here. Because I'm looking at it more than just going to walk. Eh? There's the scenery. Then you go beyond the scenery. Why do we think we have this relationship with the city of, of Montreal now? Mm-hmm. They understand and realize that that originally was our and still is to a large degree our traditional homeland. You know, so. There's a there's a uh, there's there's a constant um, uh, what would you call it educating people that are the, you know new politicians whatever that are coming in about this region here and why uh, why in some sometime in the near future you know within months as a matter of fact we're going to have to talk about those lands that are occupied right now uh, and we could consider it almost illegal occupation of lands that belong to 
belong to the scenery of Sault Ste. Louis in turn that are Ganawaga territory. And there's homes there, there's all different things. How to get settled is going to be difficult, you know. Do we do it as a package in terms of all the all the, the land that's out there the, that's um, occupied and unoccupied, or do we break it down into sections? You know, the the area that's not occupied, south of Highway 30, all that land that's open, you know. There's the farms here and this and that and the other thing. And then on the west side and the east side of Ganawagi, you got Shadagi, you got uh, you got uh, then Cote St. Catherine, you know, Candiac, and however far the line goes in terms of the scenery territory. So that's, uh, you know, and, and there's development that's going on there. Do mm-hmm. we start looking at that with a dollar sign on it? That, you know, we get that money from, from those people there? Can we conceivably or in reality think that we can move everybody? You know, that's... <laughs> Well, yeah. That's a hard thing to do, but I mean, some people are adamant here that, yep, yeah, that's what we want. Get them all out of here, or they stay here, it's our land, they pay us to live here. So maybe that's something that uh, that we're going to have to start coming down to, uh, coming to an, in, an internal understanding about what are we going to do. And on top of that, we have to start planning and develop, looking at development of those lands. So all those people who pay like a residency tax, couldn't they pay that to us? It's a possibility, depending on uh, and depending on how we negotiate it, because they're going to turn to their municipal governments, their, their councils, MPs, yeah, and then they're going to look at the at the provincial government, and then they're going to look at the federal government, because this is more of a um, although they're living in that sort of situation, but this is more of a federal Ganawagi issue. Because it's the federal government in the in the changing of uh, the different uh, governments that came in, you know, with the, with the French, then the British, and then Canada taking over, you know. <clears throat> the negotiation has always been directly with whoever the government of the day was, and at time at, at certain times it was there was no provincial government here. Mm-hmm. There was no uh, there was no Quebec government. It was New France. Uh, so there has to be a way of relooking at all of that and then bringing it forward and saying, and all that work has been done. It's just a question of reminding, you know, all the parties that be, that this is first and foremost a Canada and Ganawage situation. But then now you've got all these people living in there that were allowed to live there and they've scrapped all the original understandings and arrangements. But we haven't. We still hang on to that. Okay, we're going to take an ID break. Okay. Skana se wugwego. Hey, Oscar Delmanyo and Dana Asa FM, Ganawage sa wadahum sade. Welcome. This is Ganawage's K1037. Same time, it's. Okay, we can continue now. So, um,. Maybe that's enough on the seniorie for now. Oh no, there was one more question. What about the uh, the new governments that have been elected in October of this year, federal and the federal governments? Has there been any, I guess, special meetings just on the seniorie? Um, no, no. Uh, in passing, we've discussed it. It's been um, it's been mentioned to them. I mean, they're aware. Talking basically about the federal government. Federal government, though, is a minority. Right now, they're in a minority situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, the liberals are, are, um, I guess, sitting in a, in a very uneasy situation because, you know, they're not the majority. They're the minority, yeah. Yeah, and they, they have to depend on or going to depend on their uh, the other party, the NDP. They have to ask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when, when, you're in the, when you're in the majority, you don't have to ask. You just go ahead and, That's it. and do it. But... On the provincial side, there's very little that, uh, on, on a political level, there's been very little contact. We've sent out messages, we've asked for meetings, we want to sit down, we want to talk. For some reason, they're not doing it, you know. Uh, for what, We don't know what the, what the problem is. Um, they invited us to one, uh, they meaning the, the government of Quebec, invited us to one major gathering uh, in which they made uh, they presented a report on the uh, Viennes Commission you know, mm-hmm. missing murdered women and the treatment of our people 
And that was back, um, I don't know, in the fall. It was a last-minute thing, you know, can you, can you come to the National Assembly and we're going to give a report. It was more like a photo opportunity, really. And anybody that, it wasn't just Kahnawake, it was all the nations in Quebec. And when, they, when those that did go, they were sitting in the, you know, in the National Assembly, it was almost like they were all photographed that they're there, you know. And It's a photo op. Yeah, it's a photo op, more Let, or less. Let's all shake hands, like we're yeah. all going to work together. And, and, I, and I said, no, I said, I'm not going to go to something like that, you know. Good. You snap your finger, okay, come on, show up, so we, we all go running there. And mm-hmm. I gave my reasons why I did not go, so. And then periodically we saw, we, we, we did have meetings with with uh, a couple of key individuals in, in the government itself, but really had to insist. They came to Ganawaga, we took them on a tour, showed them what was going on, so on and so forth. Uh, but otherwise, there's not much, been much happening there. Then on the federal side, uh, it's this, this uh, I, would, I will put it this way, this Bill S3, mm-hmm. in which all the people who are registered in Ottawa have to be involved in, uh, in, any, um, in any referendum settlement. Uh, that's, that's caused the problem to, to come to a distinct halt. So it's no use trying to discuss, you know, uh, the scenery with that in the background hanging over our head. So has there, has there been a halt during the summer, before the summer, before the, the, the federal election because of this issue that yeah, you're talking about? Yeah, I would say it is. I, um, I, don't, I don't recall exactly when this became uh, a major issue. I think it was June. Maybe somewhere around there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It became a major issue because there were discussions that were, on, that were happening at the time you see, they're tied together. Eh? Yeah. Membership or citizenship, whatever you a label you want to put on it, and and the land. So they're they're tied together very closely. Uh, and at one point in time, we did have an understanding with Canada, with the with the registration department. They were going to put things on hold while we look at ways of uh, of resolving, you know, these outstanding issues. But suddenly they just forgot about that and said no more they're not going to put anything on hold they're going to continue to do what they do and that kind of broke down everything after that so we've been working towards getting back uh to the table with them but they know where our stance is and they know that's not going to change you know Mm -hmm. and a hard stance like that is one of the things that prevents some real dialogue from taking place some real forward movement and we can't do anything else but other than that that's the direction from the community. Keep that position, you know. Yeah. Our position never changes, really. No. Okay, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll talk about, uh, since the transfer of the business side of Dewa, Dewa Dunizakta, to MCK, has there been, excuse me, has there been any prospects, <clears throat> business prospects, <throat> lately? There has been, but I want to clarify one thing so people understand the relationship. <coughs> uh, and I won't go into great detail. Dewa Denizakta was the one that gave up revenue generation. Right. They willingly did that. Mm-hmm. They said, we're not in that business. What we are into is training, uh, small... Employment small, training. Small business, you know, and they're good and at education. that. Education, they are. They are very, very good yes. at that, and they, they do well. A lot of people have been, been helped in the community. You get disputes from some, you know, about what good are they and that sort of thing, but they've done well, and that's their, that's their main... Uh, their main, uh, what would you say? Uh, focus. Focus of attention is there. So revenue generation, uh, we've, we've developed a, a team of people who look at a number of different opportunities that, that, are, that are out there now that are being brought forth to us, you know. Um, some, one of those particular situations or issues is the, um, is the uh, technology sector. There was a process that began at least a couple of years ago, anyway, to uh, establish MIT as uh, as the national data indigenous data center mm-hmm. for Canada, for both the indigenous people, organizations, health services, all those educational uh, departments, whatever and wherever they use technology, um, and we've 
we were we've made a proposal that they would in turn house all their information here in Ganawaga at MIT. We would convert the, um, uh, I guess, all the infrastructure or most of the infrastructure. The the gaming issue would still the gaming um, side of MIT would continue, but then there'd be another conversion. Would use the infrastructure and all of that for all of these other opportunities. That's one thing. Then the other thing was with the government of Canada. We were having discussions with them about uh, housing a lot of information that they have that are, are the proper, are the property, if you want to call it, of indigenous peoples. Mm -hmm. So that was one that's, that's uh, and that would, that, that's, that's a great opportunity to do you know, something that uh, indigenous people have been looking at for a long time. They want their own information. They want it protected. They want it in a secure facility. Some of them have their information housed in the United States. There's major corp major companies, uh, data data service companies, that are taking care of their of their information. They don't want it there. So there's there's been a lot of dialogue that has gone on in order for uh, the data center here in Ganawaga to become the main center for all of the um, security of put, bringing information here and making sure it's secure. Governments can't look at it. Nobody can go in there and say, we want to examine what's, what's going on, what have you. Um, so that was, that's one thing that, that, that has been worked on. And it's still in its, its stages. It takes time, though, to convince people that you can do this, you know. But wasn't that in the works before this uh, this merge? Like between, like the Dewa giving up that part to MCK about the business yeah, side. Yeah, yeah, but Dewa was not involved in that though. Oh, okay. They had very little involvement in that. Um, they and then they had their own reasons why. You know, I won't go into that. But they were not involved in it, so it was driven by by the council, in particular myself and. Um, and a number of other uh, individuals who got involved to help uh, move it along. There's um, there's a number of things that have been looked at, a number of opportunities that have crossed the table. Um, you know, because let's be let's be very open about it. We're sitting on like uh, from the from the sale of our shares of Continent Eight, we're sitting on 38 million dollars Canadian. Mm -hmm. You know. And it's uh, it's a it's a good opportunity. We have not yet utilized those funds for anything except for the um, the community initiative fund CIF. We put aside X number, a couple of million dollars a year, for people to uh, uh, to tap into that. You know, within the community itself. But other than that, the uh, the main the main portion of that of that original agreement and in uh, in the sale. Has, is still sitting there, nothing is happening with it. But we do have someone overseeing that to see what we can do in terms of uh, a future um, uh, future investment, future developments. Mm -hmm. So there are a number of different things that have passed that table and, uh, and they're being contemplated. One of the things that, uh, that has been worked on uh, in, recent, in recent months uh, is uh, an opportunity with uh, with the um, with Hydro Quebec. Mm -hmm. Can we hold that thought? We yeah. have to go to break. Sorry about that. Okay, Joe. Then we are we are back now. Do you want to change uh, gears, or do you want to continue talking well, about just, that? Just a little bit about the, uh, the the issue with hydro because. Uh, this year, one of the things is it's not a money maker, or maybe it could be, is the dismantling of uh, Line Two, right? Which uh, runs from uh, across the river, you know, into Ganawage, on into Val uh, into Shattagin, I think, right up to Bohornwa. So that's gonna that's gonna be taking place. I think it's starting in October, uh, from uh, from what I can recall. I October haven't been of this year. This year, yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's that's a that's a positive thing and. Um, it's not going to cost us anything. As a matter of fact, there'll probably be some uh, some uh, compensation, compensation, residual kind of benefits from that. 
from people here in Ganawaga working on dismantling and and I don't know yet. There's already been one or two meetings, from what I recall, with with uh, business people here who want to get involved in that mm -hmm. construction uh, construction wise. Mm -hmm. um, there's also uh, a um, an opportunity uh, for Ganawaga because there's um, there's there's a line that comes from Baharnwa through Ganawaga right now, and it's servicing the U.S. Um, and we need to sit down with Hydro and start discussions on uh, benefiting from that. Um, in particular, it's uh, it's going into uh, New York, uh, and there's also a proposed um, another line, a proposed line, but it's to be buried underground in the Seniory territory. Uh, there's a what they call the the Hertel substation. That's not far from here. I believe it's uh, somewhere. I'm not exactly sure the, the exact location, but anyway. So they're they're looking at uh, putting a line underground that will then service uh, the the United States also. And they realize it's on Ganawaga territory, so there's some going to have to be some uh, something that's going to happen in 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 that particular area. We have some plans and some ideas about. What the, how that's going to benefit us because mm -hmm. there's going to be a return that's for sure and they know that they have to pay something you know one other item um, that uh, I'm going to jump here quickly to another issue is sure. uh, uh, Chief Clinton and Clinton uh, Clinton Phillips and I have been in contact and working with uh, a group from Ontario uh, and this may sound a little unusual you know but it's uh, so far from the information we've gotten uh, there's an opportunity to get, of, of all things, salt from Egypt to be used on the highways. Okay. It's well, is a, this different kind of salt? Or? Yes, it's a pure, a pure salt. It's non-corrosive. Oh. It's uh, it's something that uh, that is highly valued, if you will, and it's much much cheaper. Uh, it's more economical than what's being used right now. Mm -hmm. And we would be not just us. But uh, I'll call it a consortium of uh, of indigenous companies across Canada, the United States, across Canada mostly, uh, to be able to be the first ones to introduce that in Canada. Uh, Clinton has been the main one; he's been dealing with it. Maybe it's a little premature in uh, in in uh, making this statement, but it is something that's there. You know, and we have the city of Montreal. We have, you know, all of the different. Uh, sectors that we could be so supplying. you uh mck would be the main distributors or uh we're not even down to that oh, you're not we down to that. yeah okay we could maybe have private sector involved in this i see mm -hmm. in, involved in this too and we have to set up we'll set up a new company or whatever but it's it's being left to us here in Ganawaga from the main body that's working on this you know to uh to develop what we need to develop whatever else so uh it's uh, it's exciting news it's good news it's uh, something that nobody would ever think of. For sure. Yeah. And suddenly it's there. And to acquire, to get the product is a heck of a lot cheaper than what it costs right now, you know, here to purchase, whatever else. So there's some savings as well as there's a, there's a, a profit that maybe that, that would be generated from this. Mm -hmm. A good profit, too. Well, since we're talking about salt, yeah. we will talk about the Blue Collar Park. Yeah. What, what's what's going on with that, and is that a sure thing now? Because a few years ago, it was supposed to be across the river, and well, as far as far as I, um, I, from our last discussions with the people who are the technical people that are involved in this, this is the designation that they they uh, they've looked at. Mm -hmm. They said it's the most, um, um, I guess it's it's one it's the best place to put it. At this point in time, it's on this side of the seaway, or you know, those lines are not being used. They're not being used at this point in time, and um, and it's something that uh, you know we uh, we hear um, every day. We hear advertising. You know, uh, Chief uh, Lindsay LeBarn is is uh, explaining what the uh, project is about, proposal, but there's got to be a lot more co community consultation. Mm -hmm. You know. So we're, we get down to it in terms of the, um, 
uh, in terms of the designation of the land, so how do much you think, acreage. So do you think there'll be a pushback from the from the community? There I mean, already is. <laughs> really? Yeah, there are already people who are saying things like, you know, that shouldn't. But, you know. Well, I, I think they would think differently if they worked there. I worked there yeah. for eight years, so it's really, it, and it was deteriorating eight years ago, and it's been there 43 years. Yeah, so if you look at it now, you look at the circumstances the way it is, it's, um, I'll put it this way, first and foremost, it's it's a safety issue. Of course. You got vehicles coming and going, you know, and you got... You got the trucks coming out of there. You got the buses. Buses. You got everything. So snow plows. It's, it's not good. No. I mean, it's outlived its usefulness. Yes. The site itself, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, the reports that we've gotten back is that the uh, facility is too small. It is. It's, you're running out of room there. Mm-hmm. You know, and you got no more. You can't expand. Can't do any more than that. So, you've got to find an alternative site. Um, and uh, there's going to be pushback on it, but I'm pretty. You know, I'm confident that we'll be able to to find a find a proper place which has already been looked at and it seems like that's the proper place to do it uh and, and you're and you're used to push back joe yeah. come on <laughs> <laughs> and and in turn uh once that happens that whole area will be turned back to natural natural you know grass and everything so that you know you have a beautiful place now and you no longer have the uh that'd be great the eyesore that it is because it is you look at it, it doesn't look nice at all. No, no not at all. No. N- not the inside either. Mm. Okay, um, can we talk a little bit about the uh, the soil removal on Lot 106? The operation is going to start like next week, uh, January yeah. 13th. And it's only going to be for the soil that contains asbestos pipe, fra- pipe fragments. So how are you going to determine how far you're going to go or how, how much you're going to remove for the pipe fragments? I don't have the details, but I'm but I'm predicting. I would li- I w- I shouldn't say predicting. I would think that it's going to be the whole lot. I see. You remove everything. I don't know if it's down to a foot, two feet. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. How much? Uh, I'm I'm assuming there's records of how much was put there. You know, because it was the town that uh, did the work. Mm-hmm. It wasn't the individual, as far as I know. Well, let's hope there's records. Yeah, there should be. There should be uh, something that designates or maybe it's already been determined i don't know enough of right at this moment um uh, the um uh, what the uh, you know what the depth is and mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. the parameters of, of of how much is going to be removed oh because because what i had heard it was only going to be one lot no there's uh, this is the beginning the beginning okay this so that's the how they're going to start is with yeah. this okay well you have to start somewhere yeah so that's that's uh, that's good. Another thing was the Indian Day Schools uh, application process will begin soon. Uh, what happened to that? How come it came back to they they disagreed, then they took it to court, then now they agree? There was a um, uh, I you know there was a lawsuit that was filed by an individual or individuals against the whole process of the uh, Indian Day Schools. Um, and I'm giving you a sketchy kind of right, uh, right. of information here. And that individual, after discussion, pressure, backed off and allowed the, um, I guess, the process to continue. Because I, I don't know, I guess the way it's structured, uh, anybody can sue. And that could stop the, the process. And, you know, so... Um, I didn't. Uh, I didn't come here prepared no, with no, that particular I, I'm just, information. Yeah, so, I'm just asking. But what I know is there was a lawsuit. The person backed off. Now they're free to go ahead and do what, uh, what oh, has okay. to be done. Yeah. Okay. I don't so, know how long, much longer it'll take, but. So would you be involved in that also? I mean, would you be applying for a compensation? As I know an individual. I am. Yeah, as an individual. Yeah, why not? So would you be going for ten thousand or two hundred thousand? <laughs> <laughs> it just depends on your what your um how much abuse you received, yeah, received yeah, or something well, like that you know but when you think about it there was there was I there mean, was that would not be acceptable today i i know i've said things to people like the abuse that i that i recall or i would consider as abuse is uh you know every 
every May having to march around the Maypole yeah. and all that kind of stuff, you yeah. know, and saluting the Queen and, uh, you know, things of that nature in the classroom. And because I remember all that very quite clearly, you know. Yeah. Reciting <laughs> O Canada. Yeah. You know, I, I, I remember standing at the back of the church on the fort wall, waving to the, I don't know if it was the Queen Mother or the present Queen, but... That was when the Seaway opened. Yeah, when the Seaway opened. President Eisenhower. Yeah, I didn't know what the heck I was doing yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. There I was, we waving, were all lined you know, up. little kid, yeah. you know, maybe I was about six or seven. <laughs> but I never forgot that. No. Because it was such a big thing, you know, but I didn't realize what the Seaway did to us until, of course, I got much older, yeah. like most people. Um, I guess we can Oh, I just talk. want, I think there was no such thing as the, uh, uh, Old Canada. It was God Save the Queen. That's right, God Save the Queen. And then we didn't have a flag either. We, uh, they didn't have the, um, uh, the Maple Leaf. The Maple they Leaf. Had, they had the Union Jack. The Union Jack. Yeah. Wow, that's a long time ago. Jeez, I'm, I'm dating myself. <laughs> um, are, will you be attending the ice show in London this year? Yes, I will be. And is that... Coming up soon, February sometime? That's in or? February, the first week of February. And that's as part of the Gaming Commission? Well, I'm not on the Gaming Commission, but I'm I'm really a strong supporter of, of the of our jurisdiction, our authority in game in the in the area of gaming. And it's been uh, my practice to be in London. Uh, to be sort of a, if you want to call it an ambassador. Ambassador, yeah. For for uh, the gaming industry in Ganawaga. Uh, I mean, we do have a booth. We have a huge booth that uh, that's the Gaming Commission booth. Mm -hmm. And we've got a lot of people, customers and clients that stop by and talk and ask questions, you know. So they're, they're happy to see that the Grand Chief is there and greeting them and, you know. And then we have other meetings that are, uh, that are, uh, that are lined up uh, with, with, with potential clients and potential other other opportunities you know that uh, that will uh, that will be coming to Ganawage in the gaming side of issues mm -hmm. so we have a few minutes left would you have any closing comments besides like happy new year i know it's the 10th of january i'm still wishing people happy new year how how long does that go on anyway yeah for as long as you, <laughs> for as long March, as you want April. i guess yeah yeah well you know it's just um, when we closed off last year, I came on and and I said to everybody, just, you know, just about a month ago. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I'll take the opportunity now to talk about what I talked about back then too, about in terms of encouraging our children, education, because there's a lot of things that are going to happen in the coming years. Uh, some of it is is going to be driven by the council, some of it is by the private sector, and. Um, you know, we're looking at a possibility of uh, a number of different uh, major opportunities in in the in in this in the area of uh, of economic development. Mm -hmm. We talked about some of them earlier on, uh, but I look at a mixture of uh, public and private private sectors. I mean, we've we've uh, in some areas it's not been very too popular, but uh, the issue about Electronic gaming devices, EGDs, mm -hmm. uh, that's done well. We're going to be uh, receiving a lot of revenue from that. And here's opportunities, and that's that's a way of public and private partnerships uh, for the public to make money, individuals, business people, as well as give back to the community mm -hmm. in a very direct way. And not just donations here and there. Mind you, donations are important to the community. Mm -hmm. But in terms of actual cash coming back into our funds to be utilized in a number of different areas uh, for education, for all the different things that where there's where there's a lack of, you know, uh, for that to grow, and and get, and, and you know, because sometimes people say, well, you know, you're taxing your own people by doing that, and it's not because people are voluntarily put, coming forth and saying we're ready to put money back into the community. Give us the opportunity to make money, and jointly we'll we'll work in partnership. So it's it's a um, it's a way of the future, mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of a social kind of uh, uh, commitments that are being made. And we'd like to see more. I personally like to would like to see more of that happening. 
you know, and uh, don't be don't be mistaken it for a tax kind of thing. Mm-hmm. It's basically giving back to the community because you're you're you have the protection of the community. If if you see a benefit, it's not a tax. Yeah, I I, I don't understand that. You know? Well, it's it's unfortunate because a lot of people look at it from my individual right. Yeah. Versus the collective protection that you have here. And it's our job as as the uh, as the MCK to protect everybody, right? And to get out there, you know, and uh, and uh, have people create help create the legislation to protect that too, because we have to do that. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Joe, My for pleasure. joining us. Uh, well, next next time we'll see you again. I mean, maybe in another month, maybe two months, <laughs> whatever. So thank you again for joining Yo. us. So the humsadat sharing your time with me, AJ, and my guest, Joseph Tequila Norton. Up next is the 1 o'clock news. Have a great weekend. On a